not really that heavy, but this is a big ass lens. This is the Canon 28 to 70 F2. Hey all, welcome back for another video. If you're new here, my name is Mark and I typically talk about photography, camera gear, travel, and pretty much whatever else I feel like. Today, I'm talking about the Canon 28 to 70 F2, the huge beast of a $3,000 investment that claims to replace all of the portrait primes in your setup. Well, I bought one with my own money and I've been using it for over a year. Jeez, almost two years now. Huh. Look at how big this lens is on a camera body. So Canon launched this lens when it first launched the R series of cameras. And this is a remarkable level of engineering. Now I wish it was lighter and I wish it was smaller, but to get 28 to 70 F2 in one lens was an engineering feat that no other lens company has been able to come out with since. And for me, because I often shoot a lot of low light events, having a zoom lens to be able to accomplish that with is a pretty, pretty, pretty good thing to have. Now, there may be some of you down below in the comments who say that a 24 to 70 f2.8 is basically gonna give you the same thing, but that extra difference between f2 and f2.8 makes a world of difference when you're shooting in a really dark environment if your goal is to capture the most dynamic range that you possibly can when you're actually shooting. And for me, that's how I like to shoot. I, I wanna get as much as I can onto that image sensor when I'm actually there. And if I wanna edit a little bit more later in one direction or another, I have the data to be able to do so. So even just the difference of 0.8, that's a pretty big difference to me. Honestly, when I bought this lens, I fully intended on utilizing the return policy because it was really expensive. And Canon's claim on this lens is that you could replace pretty much all of your primes in your kit with one lens. I wouldn't say that that is the actual result of having this lens. I haven't replaced the other primes in this range in my kit for a few different reasons, but it's not because this lens doesn't do the job. It's really just the mere size of this thing. And do I wanna carry around an extra $3,000 with me all the time? A lot of times if I'm just walking around doing a photo walk for fun, I don't wanna carry this big ass lens with me because it's super heavy, let alone the just cost of equipment that you're carrying around with you. So I use this lens in a few different ways. In the studio here, I often love to pull this out for, for portraits because it gives me that zoom range that just kind of makes it flow a little bit easier. I can get a lot more shots in the same period of time without having to switch out lenses. And because it's F2, you just have that blurry background and that little bit of depth of field if that's what you're looking for in your photography. I happen to like that aesthetic, not everybody does, but you could obviously stomp this down to a much higher f-stop and still have that zoom range. But the optical quality is amazing. There's like no chromatic aberration, there's no distortions, there's nothing like that. And even the bokeh on this lens is just different than it is in any other lenses that I have. It's just creamier. One of the cool things about this lens and all the other RF lenses is that it has the control ring on here, which is an assignable dial that you can swap out for your shutter or your ISO or your uh, exposure compensation or your f-stop. So when you're shooting in the moment, it's just one more control service to quickly get to where you want exposure wise. Because I only have one other RF lens, I haven't really gotten in the habit of using the control ring for that purpose, but once in a while I remember that I do have that control and I use it. So I wouldn't say that this is like the main selling point on it. And because it clicks as you move it, if you're using it for video, that may impact your production depending on what the audio situation is, but Canon does offer a declicking service at an additional cost. I wish it came declicked, or I wish you could select that like on some other lenses that are out there from Sigma, but you know, 28 to 70 F2, this is the only lens that exists like this. One of the downsides for me, other than the weight and the bulk and the heft and the budget, is that it's a 95 millimeter filter, which makes finding like an ND filter almost impossible. You're not left with too many options. And even a front cover for this, just to protect the glass, like a clear or UV filter was considerably expensive. So it's 95 millimeter. So if you want like a moment cine bloom lens or like a Peter McKinnon VND, you're kind of SOL on that. There's not a lot of options for 95 millimeter NDs. I have used this lens for video, but I mostly use it for portrait and event work. So out of all the shoots that I've done with this lens, where it really shined for me was actually out on the campaign trail. 
We experienced a lot of varying lighting conditions. And you know, as I've said before on this channel, I'm not a huge fan of strobes. My event work is more about capturing the, the ambiance of the room or the space and the event that, that I'm there to capture. And while the art of sculpting light in those kinds of environments is something that so many photographers spend so much time on, personally, I choose camera equipment that gives me the most amount of dynamic range that I can get. So was it worth it? I don't know, honestly, like I go back and forth with myself about like, could I just get away with a 24 to 70? Like, am I really using this lens in those super dark environments as often as possible? But I keep coming back to this lens because I can get just a little bit more dynamic range shooting at F2 than I can at 2.8. So I keep holding on to it. Now, if it came down to having to sell this lens or the rest of the primes that are in my kit that are in this focal range, I would probably sell the rest of the primes that are in that focal range. This lens is just, it's really versatile and it is great in low light. And because it's so sharp at F2, yeah, I don't know. Well, I already told you why I bought it, so why do I keep rambling on? Check this one out down below with the links in the description. Sometimes they're on sale at B&H or Adorama, not usually on Amazon, but check the links down below. All right, I'll see you on the next one.